Hello and welcome to Middle East Matters. Coming up on the show this week, an assassination in broad daylight in Tehran. Iran's president seeks vengeance for the death of Revolutionary Guard Colonel Sayyad Khodai. An Egyptian influencers beware the al-Sisi government has social media stars in its crosshairs, all part of its crusade to defend what it says are family values. We'll speak with Amnesty International campaigner Suleiman Benghazi. And we'll find out one of the best ways to visit Turkey is to do it by train aboard the Dogu Express with beautiful landscapes outside and delicious food on board. Iranians in mourning after the assassination of Colonel Sayyad Khodai. Tehran is pointing the finger at the U.S. and Israel and vowing revenge, the high-profile killing of this revolutionary guard looking like it will further set back relations between Iran and the West. This says negotiations to restore a 2015 nuclear deal have been stalled since March. Allison Sargent has the details. Thousands of mourners fill the streets of Tehran, escorting the body of Revolutionary Guards Colonel Sayyad Khodai. Crowds call for death to Israel and the United States as officials vow revenge. Iran's response to any threat or action will be harsh, but we will determine when it will be and under what circumstances. We will definitely take revenge on our enemies. Assailants on motorcycles shot Khodai five times in broad daylight as he sat in his car outside his home. The colonel was a member of the Revolutionary Guard's foreign arm, the Quds Force, and had reportedly served in Syria. It's the most high-ranking killing since 2020, when senior Quds Force commander Hassem Soleimani was killed in Iraq in a U.S. airstrike. Later that year, one of Iran's top nuclear scientists was also assassinated in an attack blamed on Israel. Israel has never confirmed or denied involvement and has also declined to comment on Hodai's killing, though Iran is again pointing at Israel and the U.S. There is no doubt that the hand of global arrogance can be seen in this crime. Kodai's killing comes amid uncertainty over the revival of the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, with talks stalled since March. One of the main sticking points is Tehran's demand that its revolutionary guards be removed from a U.S. terrorism list, a request rejected by Washington. Egyptian influencers, especially women, have become the target of a crackdown by authorities. At least a dozen women have been prosecuted since 2020 for what's described as attacking family values. Hanin Hassam and Mawada Al-Adam, for instance, have respectively been condemned to three and six years in jail on charges of attacking society's values and inciting human trafficking. Like most TikTokers, they made videos of themselves dancing and lip-syncing to music. The trafficking charges linked to their encouraging others to become social media content creators. Well, for more on this repression, let's speak with Suleiman Benghazi of Amnesty International, who's joining us on the line from, from Tunis. Uh, Suleiman, one of the ways the government is going after these people is by using a cyber criminality law introduced by the LCC government in 2018, which regulates any social media account with more than 5,000 5, followers, the same it would a press agency. Can you tell us what's the government, government's objective in doing this, and why are these young women considered to be such a threat to society? The government objective with this law enacted in 2008, the cybercrime law, is simply to respect freedom of expression online. Um, it's another assault on freedom of expression, basically. It gives the state near control over print, online, and broadcast media. As you mentioned, content creators who have more than 5,000 followers on their social networks are also under strict surveillance by the authorities. According to Reporters Without Borders, Egypt ranks at 168 on 180, uh, one of the lowest countries in their index measuring freedom of expression, and uh, most of uh, independent media outlets uh, are blocked in Egypt. For instance, Mada Masr is inaccessible in Egypt since 2017. At Amnesty International, we documented the arrests of 10 women TikTokers, influencers, who were put on trial for violating the draconian cybercrime law and other vaguely provision related to decency and inciting immorality. Family values, as you, as you mentioned, and there are questions of decency, morality, they're often touted uh, in these cases uh, to, to lead to, to these sentences. How would you define those, those particular values that are uh, proponed? And uh, are they actually kept vague on purpose? 
We think they are kept vague on purpose, and the real reason, uh, according to our, our own documentation and research, these women, they are being punished for the way they talk, they dress and uh, act and attempt to influence the broader public on social media and earn money online. Uh, they have a huge following on social media, sometimes reading from uh, thousands uh, to several uh, hundreds uh, of followers. Uh, and uh, the Egyptian authorities are trying to restrict the influence of, uh, of these content creators uh, on the society. And uh, the, the president, al-Sisi, came to power in uh, 2014 in a coup that overthrew the Muslim Brotherhood. But it's, he's the one today who's, who's running this sort of morality campaign against these young women or these, these young men, too. How do you explain this, this switch, this shift? Well, th since President Sisi came to power in 2014, uh, we at Amnesty International have documented an unrelenting crackdown on freedoms of peaceful as uh, assembly, expression, uh, and association. I think this crackdown on social media influencers uh, is in the, continu the continuity of this wider crackdown on freedom of expression. And do you see this as a, as a nod to the more conservative uh, part of Egyptian society that uh, supports the Muslim Brotherhood, for instance? Uh, I wouldn't say that. We haven't, uh, we haven't specific facts or research on documentation on this issue, so I can't comment on that. Very well. Amnesty is raising awareness internationally on the plight of these uh, creators, but Egypt still benefits from substantial support from Western governments, European arms deals, uh, U.S. aid. Al-Sisi himself has received the Legion of, Legion of Honor here in France. Um, does Amnesty communicate with Western governments about these issues and uh, what response do you get? Of course, we do communicate with Western governments on these issues and on the close cooperation between Egypt and Western countries such as France. In every documentation, every research that we put out on our platform, there is a set of recommendations that is addressed uh, to uh, Western countries, calling on them uh, to put pressure on the Egyptian authorities to release the thousands of individuals who are arbitrarily detained only for exercising their human rights for improving the legislation, for uh, easing their grip on freedom of association, expression, and peaceful assembly. Suleiman Begazi, uh, thank you very much uh, for those insights uh, on that issue of the repression of social media influencers in Egypt. Thank you. And all aboard the Eastern Express, or Dogu Expressi in Turkish, the train line from Ankara in the west to Kars in the east near the border with Armenia. Since it was inaugurated in 1936, the train journey has showcased the country's beautiful and diverse scenery. And as you'll see in this report from our France de colleagues, getting a ticket is often a lifelong dream for many of its passengers. It's an extraordinary train that crosses almost the entirety of Turkey chugging along the banks of the Euphrates River. For many, the adventure begins out west in the capital Ankara, before heading east toward lesser known places. Car number five, that's us, let's go. Car number five. Passengers sing as they board the Dogu Express, happy to settle in and decorate their cabins for the journey. I put up the word love because I'm traveling with the person I love most in the world, my brother. I surprised him with this trip. He's been sick, but he's better now, so we're celebrating. This group of friends travels together every year. There's four of us, and nothing will tear us apart until we die. We're like sisters. The Dogu Express is an epic 32 hours of enchantment. From the snow of the Anatolian Plateau to the winding ride through the canyons of the Euphrates River. The colors are changing all the time. It goes through all the shades from brown to red. It's beautiful. For an afternoon pick-me-up, passengers brew Turkish coffee in their rooms. This couple saved up to buy their tickets, which cost a quarter of their monthly budget. I love trains and riding this train. I've been dreaming of it for 20 years. Tickets need to be reserved months in advance. We feel very lucky. We've waited a long time for this. We wanted to go last year, but it was all booked up. 
passengers are as honored to be on the train as the conductor is to drive it. The locomotive dates back to the 1990s and runs on fuel. Almost everything on board is manually operated. That's the horn. That's the brake for the cars. And that's the brake for the locomotive. I have to stay focused, always on alert. The train makes seven stops for several hours or several minutes. Oh, this feels good after so many hours on the train. <laughs> Once back on board the Dogu Express, it's dinner time. With buffets set up in cabins, offering spiced bread, stuffed grape and cabbage leaves, and specialties from the Black Sea. This dish has a lot of butter and some flour and cheese. It's very nourishing. You'll gain a few pounds, but it tastes really good. Then it's time to bed down for one last night. Can you give me my teddy bear, please? Look, even the blanket comes from home. Others celebrate ahead of a late overnight arrival in Kars, on the border with Armenia. As the sun rises over the city, they'll discover its citadel and cathedral and chilly temperatures. The Dogu Express, meanwhile, will be heading back west. And that's it for this edition of Middle East Matters. We'll see you next week. Thank you.